Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. Welcome into my studio. And on this video, I'm going to be showing you how I start to add the details to that test wolf drawing on the left hand side. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, you can get them on YouTube. Now, I did this test drawing before I embarked on that real detailed one on the right hand side. If you're interested in seeing how I do a, a complete masterworks like that over on my uh, Patreon art channel www.patreon.com forward slash wildlife art you can see that on there it's many hours long and shows you absolutely everything so if you want to jump up in technique or you want to see how I achieve certain things that's where you're going to see it it's also on DVD on my channel on my art website and that's www.jasonmorgan.co.uk so let's watch a video on this test piece and you'll see exactly how I create this depth and thickness of fur texture. Okay, so now that underdrawing is done, I'm going to start to actually detail the eye itself with pastel pencils, pastel sticks. And I'm not going to spend time showing this on the video because on my YouTube channel I've got quite a few detailed videos now showing large pastel eyes. So we would just be going over that again. So I'll just skip through that and then we can really look at how I start to create this fur texture. So when I create fur texture, the method that I follow on most of my drawings is to get the underdrawing done first. Now you've seen that on the first two videos where I use those pan pastels and sticks to actually get that underlayer done. So that's my mid-tone over the old canvas. Now after I've done that, I like to come in with the darks. And that usually means that I come in using Conti sticks. But you can also do this with pencil. I use the Conti sticks basically because they're very easy to handle, they're cheap to buy, and they save my pencils. If I'm using pencils all the time, doing all of it with pencils, I'm going to wear them down and I'll be buying them all the time, as I said. So I like to use these Conti sticks. Now, because I've got the undercolors already in there, I can just get away pretty much with only using the black because what I'm doing now on this particular wolf is just putting in the dark shadowy areas in between the highlight areas. So we've got our mid-tone already down. Now I'm putting in the darks and then to put in the details I'll use a couple of sticks but for the real real details I'll start to come in with sharp pencils and overlay those on top. So as you can see, I've sharpened my stick. Now you can do that simply with a bit of um, sandpaper on a hard surface, on a flat surface, and you just draw the stick over it a few times, and that'll create a sharp edge. Now some people do a sharp edge on both sides to create a point to it. Now what I don't like about that is, because the point is then in the central part of the stick, I can't see where it's actually drawing. So I like to sharpen just one edge and that gives me a chiseled edge. Alternatively, you could sharpen all four edges and that'll give you more of a pencil look to it. But I quite like, you know, doing this chiseled edge and these sticks are firm so it lasts a long time as well. Now the important thing to do is to keep these marks going in the fur direction. So just as you've probably seen on my oil painting videos, exactly the same technique here got to go in the fur direction. That's what's giving the shape and the form to the animal. So if you're going in the wrong direction, it's just not going to look believable at, at all. So got to go in that fur direction. Now that brown piece of paper, in case you're wondering, there's nothing special about it. I'm using that because I'm doing this flat on a table with a camera above me for ease of use and also to get the best video for you guys possible. If I was doing it, actually uh, vertically on a canvas I wouldn't need that piece of paper I could be using a marl stick or something to rest my hand on instead so I'm just going to speed this section up now so you can see how this underlayer develops so you can do see I'm doing lots and lots of little very small marks Go an extra dark then on the parts that are going to be quite dark like that part up there on the top section. This section is going to be quite light so I only need a few of those little marks on there. So I don't want to go too dark there. And you can see that colour, the undercolour really showing through. 
given that effect that I put lots of different colors down on the under layer of these um, small marks. And you don't have to sharpen these sticks very often either doing this. What I normally do is sharpen both ends so I can easily flip it around if I need a sharper mark. So you can see how it goes. Very small marks now on this nose area, the bridge of the nose. Almost just like little dots. Just add in a few lighter tones. So now I've done that under layer using the black, I can start to come in then and start to use some lighter tones. So I can still stay in with the sticks if I want to or go to the pencils and start to gently overlay the colours on top. So I'm creating layers, very similar once again to oil painting. If you've seen any of my pastel videos you know I, I say quite a lot how similar the techniques are. It's almost identical if you're used to oil painting or even acrylic painting. Going over to pastels is very very easy. In fact you'll probably actually be a bit shocked at how easy it is to go over to it. With coloured pencils then it starts to get a bit more tricky. If you've try, tried coloured pencils it can be a bit frustrated. I know I was frustrated with them because basically I just haven't got the patience to do all that negative work because you can't put a light easily over a dark layer. So you can't work which is the you know the normal way you would think the lighter fur texture actually lays on top of the dark. That's just how it works with highlights coming from the sun they're sitting on top. So to then do it with a coloured pencil you've got to leave out the highlight area so you're actually working backwards and that's why I love pastels it's, it's just how the animal or the fur is on the animal you start with the darker under layers and then you layer the lighter layers on top and that's what I'm doing here with these Conti sticks so quite a light touch I haven't even sharpened this one I'm just using the, the actual pointy ends that's already on it just using the corners, going in that fur direction and just overlaying. As simple as that, just overlaying. And you can see how quickly a drawing can develop when you're using these techniques. I've not gone too light yet. And once again, I'll speed this section up so you can see how this layer develops as well. So you can see the edge I've sharpened on that pastel stick is on the uh, holder on the right now so you can clearly see how I sharpen them to about 45 degrees I assume. Lots and lots of different colours in this um, very brightly lit section so I'm using pinks, oranges, yellows but no pure white so I'm saving that till last. Don't want to go too white just yet. So I'm getting all these colours in before I blend them because these are not the details yet. Sometimes if you haven't got the colour you want and you need to subdue it you can put a grey on top so don't forget you can layer with your pastels quite easily. Blending that with my finger because I don't want to go too soft a blend and then in areas that I do I can come back in with that soft Derwent stump like just like I did with the um, initial blocking in and that's glazing with a pencil see I'm using on his side just lightly going over the top so you can still see all the colors underneath I'm not creating lines with that subduing it with the gray and the darkening it then with the Carbothello black pencil So that's a nice easy way to, you know, darken areas and slightly adjust colours as well by this glazing technique. Because in the um, Conti stick, although I've got the full set there, there's always going to be colours that you're missing and same in with your pencils and any of your pastels. There's always going to be something you, 
you're looking for that you haven't got. So don't forget you can layer other colors on top. Now I'm coming back in with the sticks with this fur texture. Okay, so back down to normal speed. As I said, it develops really quickly with these techniques. And this was only a test piece, but I wanted to try different things out. I wanted to try out how I could blend and make the fur look soft. How I could create harder edges. How much I would need to um, create a dark underlayer. How dark I needed to go while still being able to overlay enough layers on this pastel matte paper to create the areas that's going to be very, very vibrant and very light in colour. Lots of the other papers, you can only put one or two layers and then it just won't accept any more layers. That's why I've done quite a few tests on different papers. I've bought lots and lots of them. And I've got a pastel paper test review then on my YouTube channel so that you guys don't have to go out and spend lots of money and end up with a drawer full of pastel papers that you don't like just to find out the one that works. And if you're doing um, wildlife and you need to get lots of layers, pastel matte is by far, so far, the most all-round um, usable paper that I've found. Things like pastel card is also very good, but if you get any moisture or water near it, it just falls to pieces and the surface comes off. So pastel matte is much more robust and UART papers are also very, very good as well. 600 or 800 grade is nice and smooth, just like pastel matte, but still able to take lots of pastel layers. You can see here how I'm still building layers going lighter and lighter most of the time but the beauty with pastel again is that you can go dark over the top of the lights too so gently go in brighter I don't want to put my brightest light on too quickly and I don't want to go pushing these pastels too hard and filling up the two for that paper now as I said you could have done all this stage using pastel pencils instead of the sticks if you're looking for more art resources, I've really got you covered. I've got a dedicated tutorial website, that's jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of videos on there, ebook tutorials, you name it, it's on that site. I've got a Patreon art channel. So every month I put up brand new videos, and that could be pastel videos, oils, charcoals, the full length videos and there's also photo references with the Easy Trace line art on there. I've got quite a few hundred people supporting me and that's on Patreon. And also if you have to even more reference photos, I've got a dedicated website just packed and packed with reference photos. I think there's about 900 on there at the moment. So that's wildlifeart-online.com. Now please, with my YouTube channel, new videos coming on here as well. If you can possibly subscribe to the channel, then you're never going to miss out on new videos.